Welcome um, to the, well, actually it's the first, I think probably of many cancer bridges that we will um, share uh, so that um, anyone that has, um, which is probably everyone actually that is affected by cancer can join to be either supportive or to receive or both actually. Um, I put my clear eyes on. Um, so I'm just going to do a bit of an introduction to what we're what we're doing. This is actually um, uh, the journey is in um, a book called Planetary Healing uh, by Nikki Skelly and Mark Hallert. Uh, they um, Nikki went through um, or is a cancer survivor, and uh, actually it was after her own experience that this came in for others. Uh, so and then she for quite a, quite a few years. Um, held the, these pre-cancer bridges for uh, groups and people. And, and that's actually, well, I guess we'll touch on that with the introduction. I'll say a little more so I don't have to repeat myself. Um, uh, so actually I'll just read, there's this nice short introduction. There is more to her story in the book. Um, so if you're interested, um, you can check that out or ask me for more information. Uh, so the, um, uh, so you can do this alone. Um, or with others. So if you wanted to tap in um, uh, to the recording, you can just place yourself uh, within to receive uh, any time. So you can, and anyone that wants to do or like to, would like to participate can enter into this on um, this ritual, this journey, uh, this healing uh, on your own behalf or that of other people suffering with cancer. Um, you or the others you wish to work on will be placed into the center of the parabola, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about if you're not sure what that is. And once your connection to it is well established and the flow of energy is strong, um, if you don't have anyone specific in mind, you can focus on a particular hospital or send out to a general call for anyone who has cancer anywhere in the world um, or, or stand in support um, of others. Um, the addition of your focused energy is always utilized and appreciated. And so um, in the process that, um, that Mark and Nikki developed, um, we neither judge nor banish the cancer cells and see nothing intrinsically evil about them. There's nothing in nature that is evil, certainly unwanted, just but not evil. Um, they leave of their own accord, and once they've left, their trajectory always takes them away from Earth, away from us. Um, many respondents to our, our, these um, cancer bridges um, and healings have spoken of feeling a, like a sense of relief, even joy from the departing cells. Um, perhaps they're um, responding to a call or need elsewhere that's more appropriate for them, even useful. Right? We, all, we all feel better when we're useful uh, on many levels. Perhaps as some have described, our clear intention coupled with the power of the parabolic form uh, that we'll be using that carries it encourages a wholesale exodus of the cancer. Uh, in any event, the ceremony provides an opportunity for us to engage in a moment of heart-centered, proactive co-creation and problem solving. In no way uh, does Nikki suggest this method to be used for other cell structures, such as infections or non-cancerous diseases. This is specifically for cancer cells. Yeah. Cancer cells are unique in that they seem to have been to have beaten the system, so to speak, and in doing so, have revealed an intriguing intelligence. Uh, in the lab laboratory of the human body, there are complacent cells that act the way we expect them to, um, as they have for generations. These are subject to programmed cell death um, or apoptosis and me the mechanism that forces each cell to keep to the general cycles of cell life dying when damaged or no longer needed. Cancer cells on the other hand are super cells that have overcome the limits imposed on normal cell life and reproduction. Our parabolic vessel helps us to focus the cancer cells and send them out into the universe. Um, the par parabola is the mathematical curve that is often used in everyday life. You can imagine a satellite dish um, as an example that it's not a so that it's not just a random shape. It, that actually, the satellite dish itself is not a random shape. It's a parabola in receiving mode. the The dish gathers all of the incoming information from satellites, and regardless of where that information hits on the surface of the dish, it bounces that information to one focal point. Mm -hmm. Or you can also consider a car headlight. 
the parabolic dish that surrounds the bulb is in sending mode and serves to focus the light from the bulb into a beam that shines directly ahead where we need to see. So here we are going to, we use this parabolic structure to help us direct cancer cells from Earth out into the universe. Each cell is on its own journey. They start out kind of crowded together in a tightly focused beam um, that is constantly changing directions with the rotation of the planet. Um, as the beam becomes diffuse, they drift further apart until each is truly alone. Sooner or later, each cell will fall to the surface of some receptive planet. Yeah. Um, this planet, once too hot or too dry, will have sufficiently evolved, as new planets do, um, for life to take a foothold despite ongoing harsh conditions. Through aeons of evolution, this life will continue to evolve from that little spark to a world full of complex and varied life forms. There are billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars. How many planets exist that are ready for life is unknowable. But the cancer cells seem willing to take the opportunity that we offer. While some cells may end up voyaging for eternity and others may fall into a star or black hole, think of what it means to be the one cell that jumpstarts a whole ecosystem. The Earth spins as it wanders through, the, through space. Consequently, every time the parabolic ritual is used, the dish is aimed at a different area of the universe than ever before. Even when it looks as if it's aimed at a place covered um, during a previous exercise, the angle would have changed and new targets will be exposed. Okay. So in this visualization, we invite the cancer to leave the host they are harming and go to a place where each cell may be the spark of life that takes root on a planet that is ripe for life. Okay. So in, in alchemy, we begin with identifying the matter or the prime material that needs to transformation. Okay. And cancer is certainly a worthy, worthy matter to be transformed alchemically. Um, and this vessel um, is strengthened by each and every person who takes this journey. So, and it's, this journey has been taken very many times by many people. So it's become a very powerful um, uh, ritual and experience. And, and so we're, um, we're gonna get started. If, uh, if you feel like you need to lay down or change positions or have some other support or comfort, please feel free to do so. So just give yourself a moment to uh, get settled and make adjustments um, if you feel the need. And we're just going to start with some grounding and centering, maybe some, some belly breath. So I'm going to close your eyes and soften. And you know, just put your attention down into the belly. Where we put our attention is where the breath and energy is focused within. So just breathe some belly breaths. And as you exhale, just allow that grounding, that settling, that dropping in, sinking into the support beneath you. And while we're just taking a few grounding and centering breaths, I just want to take a moment to honor everyone's willingness to do this work um, and take your place in the original circle that continues to be strengthened every time this journey is taken. Um, start to just shift your awareness into the heart center. So just put your mind's eye there, your focus, and just, just breathe with your attention in the heart. As you place your attention there, we intend to, to get a sense of that eternal flame that lives within the heart in whatever way you sense it. So we all have different senses. Some may be able to visualize and imagine. Um, some may just know, some may feel. So however you can get a sense of that, that eternal essence, that spark, that light within the heart. 
And then we feed that, we feed that flame, we fuel that flame with love. Love is a vibration that heals all. And so just maybe think of something or someone you love, bring it close to your heart. Help bring that vibration in. And, and notice how your, your flame grows. Feel it. Feel that warmth spread or see that light intensify or change color or whatever it is that you're experiencing. And then we'll bring in the heart breath. And starting um, with the earth breath. Right? So just add, when you exhale, next to exhalation, send your awareness down into the earth to the, to the core or center or heart, heart of the earth. There's an infinite, infinite supply of supportive, nourishing, compassionate energy there that we can tap into. It's always there. We just have to consciously receive it. So when we use our breath to receive it, as you inhale, imagine drawing up that energy, bring it up into your heart. Uh, invite it to merge, invite that, that um, mingling of uh, the earth energy with your heart energy and, and love. Continue. Good. And then just take time to receive it. So inhale, draw energy up from the earth into your heart. Exhale, just let it mist through you. Receive it, soak it up. Good. It might start within the heart, but so we give ourselves time to, to set our own um, space and receive what we need. And so feel free to give it a color, whatever helps you make that experience tangible. Breathing in from the heart of the earth into the heart. Exhale. Receiving it. And, and we're also, um, or the next uh, thing we'll do is um, receive from above. So maybe with your next exhale, just start to send your attention with your breath up into the cosmos, intending to seek out that source of light and love, and intelligence, vitality from above. Yeah. And again, it's the same process. Once you get a sense of that, it's that you, the tap's just flowing and we just have to drink. Just breathe in, breathe it in, bring it into your heart. Let it fill you breath by breath. Consciously receiving it on that exhale. And then we're going to bring those energies together so that we, uh, when you, the next breath in, draw from the heart of the earth and the heart of the cosmos, bring those energies together within the heart. Yeah. Experience that power, receive that, um, that union of energies within you, and then let it radiate within you. Right? Let it fill you, let it heal you, let it give you whatever it is that you need at this moment. Let it transform heaviness or emotion. Whatever arises. Breath by breath, you receive the energies that can help you take care of it or just help you to um, rise up and come into a vibration where you can both either receive or, or give as needed. So we start with ourselves. We always prepare ourselves first. So 
building a strong fire within for the alchemy. As we continue to breathe the heart breath, know, though that radiant light that's emitted starts to connect to the heart flames of all who are on this call and others who will receive um, and work with the recording um, and all that have of those that have done this work before. It's an ever growing circle of power and strength. You just sense that connection to that large and growing circle. Get a sense of, as you practice the heart breath, your heart flame uniting with the heart flames of the other people who have, who are part of the circle and, and sense that geographical span of the greater circle. It's as though you are a part of a great glowing circle whose light gets stronger with each breath and becomes a beacon that welcomes all of the support, all of the love, all of the uh, intelligence and allies um, of the light that will join us and add their power, their strength, their healing. So invite your spirit guides, ancestors, deities, animal totems, plant spirit allies, any intelligence through the creation that's willing to help and support you and all the participants in this process. Now begin to shift your focus so that you're exhaling from your heart into the center of the circle. And notice how as we all do this, how the circle creates the shape of a parabolic curve, the vessel um, you are surrounding or we are surrounding is a parabola. As you continue breathing the heart breath, allow the energy of compassion to flow from your heart or from your hands, um, if uh, you have that ability as well, and into the center of the circle. Good, as the current gets stronger, and, when, and as we are all fully, fully engaged, connected, go ahead and place yourself in the center if you are the one with cancer, or call into the focal point those you wish to work with or who are dealing directly with, with cancer. And as we invoke the energies of earth and sky through this par par parabola, the center of our circle becomes the antenna. And if you're in the center, just speak um, quietly within yourself or out loud if you choose to. Um, your willingness to receive and be strengthened by the energies that are flowing into you. Just relax and open further to the energies pouring into the center from every direction. From the outer circle, from the earth, and as directed through our heart breaths and, and our hands, and, and from the intelligence of the stars and the outer cosmic energies and all of the allies that are here supporting. Just absorb all that you want or need. Mm -hmm. 
as we continue to pour that light and love and energy uh, into the center, it um, becomes quite strong and, and full and, and there's enough there for those at the outer um, edge of the circle to uh, uh, fill up as well and receive. that all, all present, all participating, become full. And now is the time to redirect the flow of energy and send the cancer cells out straight up from those in the center of the circle. Invite cancer to respond to your call. Stating your intention and honoring it out loud as needed, salute the cancer cell, thank it for its depth of its teachings, honor its potential out into the universe where it will help instead of harm, and offer your prayers that it will achieve its highest potential. As you appeal to its intelligence, honor with confidence its ability to find its way and just continue to hold your intention as the migration of cancer cells begins. In response to the invitation, the cancer cells start to leave, transmitting outward from the parabola. The group continues to transmit the energies and the flow of existing cancer cells gets stronger. And by virtue of the size and power of the collective circle, the transmission flows in such a strong current that it attracts many cancer cells from hosts who have not been specifically included in the process. Just keep up the transmission by simply paying attention as the process continues, inviting as many of the cancer cells to evacuate um, as possible at this time. Anything's possible. This is a moment of power. We'll leave time for this process. So stay focused.
Now is the time for you to just simply hold space for something unimaginable to occur, open to divine intervention. And just observe and enjoy this part of the transformation process. Eventually, you will move into a sense of completion. Uh, and there may be a feeling of, of being spent, uh, which reflects the void created by the new absence of cancer um, and the waning flow of energy. Which means it will be time to refill. So we will fill that void with light and love and healing energy. Each of us and the entire parabolic vessel is connected to the great mother, the earth. And it is from this vast and infinite source that we are filled and renewed. Just allow yourself to experience the vital energy from the mother entering, pouring through your entire body, your consciousness, your soul, and your spirit. Perhaps remember what it's like to be in the womb and connected to your mother through the umbilical cord. And receive all that you need. those that are in the center of the circle and those that are holding space, filled, become filled. Receive the nourishment, receive the support, the strength, courage, the light, the energy that you need. And it is when we come into a place of gratitude that we open up fully to receiving. And it's important to honor and give thanks to this work and what you've just received or shared. And to all beings supporting this work, all unseen spirits, totems, guides, the great mysteries plant spirits, powers of earth and the cosmos, source.
parabolic structure. And remember to thank yourself and everyone who has taken time to strengthen the parabola to lessen the suffering on the planet. And just another moment of honoring and thankfulness. And when you feel ready, take the time with your gratitude. When you feel ready, uh, we'll start to ground and center. And then so you can come back to the earth part of the heart breath, or just drop back down into, into the belly. And take some belly breaths and with each exhale, sense that settling back in and getting maybe a little heavier and relaxed, soft, receptive. And as you slowly and gently return to your current place, know that the parabola continues to function. Also, the structure of the parabola that we've tuned into remains viable beyond the time when we focus on it. And it's strengthened every time anyone does this work. So you can return to the energy of healing with the parabola anytime. When this feels complete for you, uh, just intend to dis disconnect um, from the parabola, from the experience from the group, so you come back into your own uniqueness. Um, you might rub the hands, uh, you might go, or even wash the hands if you feel the need for that physical um, cleansing. Just the intention is everything. Intend to pull back into your own power. Um, and if you feel the need, feel free to record your experience in a, in a journal. If you don't, that's fine. Just receive. Um, I suggest to drink water um, after you complete this healing. And know that you can come back and do this as often as you feel the need. I'm grateful for all of you that are, have joined us at this moment and will continue to do so.